What's up? What's up? Billy Carson here, a.k.a. Forbidden Knowledge. Gonna go live for a few minutes here and drop some knowledge in this uh, Forbidden Knowledge live. Give you guys a chance for the notifications to go out here. We're going to talk about procrastination and self-sabotage for a few minutes. What's up, Cruz? We got Kenny Garcia in the house. Make sure you guys go on Amazon and get his book. All right, get his book by Kenny Garcia, Becoming the Ultimate Human. Make sure y'all check that out. I got to get with Cruz. Cruz, I'm going to give you a call when I get off this live. I got to talk to you, boy. We ain't talking in a minute. All right, man. For sure. Hey, guys. Quick talk today. I'm, you can see I'm a little moist. <laughs> it's a little sweaty here. Just was out here on the beach doing my walk. I'm on the ocean. Just took a break over here to stop. In and something that was on my mind that I felt like I wanted to be able to share with y'all and it's about procrastination and self-sabotaging and I see a lot of people out here still going through that same cycle every single year year in year out a lot of promises are made a lot of commitments are made a lot of I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I, I, I definitely will I'm going to achieve this and I'm going to achieve that and then all of a sudden it just it's not happening not at the pace that it should be happening a lot of people are, are falling short on a consistent basis okay and i understand life gets in the way situations get in the way obstacles get in the way unforeseen things get in the way you get blindsided by life and the next thing you know your hopes wishes and dreams get put on a shelf and then that shelf collects dust and as that shelf is collecting dust you're moving through this through this universe like an NPC. You don't even know who you are anymore. Okay? We have to be able to get past this procrastinating situation that a lot of people are going through. And it really boils that boils down to two things. One thing is fear. Fear is one of the biggest reasons why people procrastinate. Fear, false evidence appearing real. A lot of people will put their entire life on hold due to the fear of failure. The fear of failure is holding you back. There are people out here less qualified than you doing the things that they want to do and living their best life. And they're more qualified. They're less qualified than you. You're more qualified than them. Why do you think that is? Because they believe in themselves. They don't have that self-doubt. They don't believe in that negative self-talk. The fear of failure is one of the biggest things holding people back. You have to release that fear of failure. You have to let it go. We're all going to fail and we're all going to succeed at different things in different time periods. I failed a lot in my life. But all those fa failures were like rungs on a ladder leading me to my own success. See, the trick with failure is this. Sometimes people fail and they see it as, oh, I mean, I failed, I lost. I took that L as a loss. I'm just going to move on to the next thing. But they never take time to meditate on that L, which is really an L for learning, not loss. They never take time to meditate on it and try to figure out exactly why they failed. What factors put them in that situation, in that position, why they didn't succeed? And how can they learn from that and grow from it? So they can move on to the next thing with better knowledge on how to not allow that previous thing to happen again. You have to take time. You have to take a pause in between your movements when something didn't go right for whatever reason. And you have to fully analyze it and completely break it down so that you can learn from it and figure out what the wrong move was and how you can fix that problem and add that to your database for success. You see, this is how you have to build. The procrastination is really based mostly on fear. And then you couple that with the second thing, which is laziness. We're living in a world today where everyone wants instantaneous gratification. They want instantaneous success. They don't want to go through the process. They don't want to trust the process. They don't want to, you know, pay their dues. I had to pay my dues to get to where I'm at. I had to go through a process to get to where I'm at. I had to lose money. I had to fall short. I had to fail at things to get to where I'm at. I didn't just wake up and, you know, been able to live the life that I'm living. I had to start from ground zero. And really, I started from ground negative zero. 
people don't see that part. They don't experience that part. They only want to see the success. And when they see the success, they go, how can I get on and be, and be that successful as well? A lot of the teachings that I've put out over the years will give you enough information to shortcut the process a little bit, but you'll still have to pay your dues. And you're still going to have to do one main thing, take action. And if you're lazy, you can't take action if you're lazy. Laziness is not conducive to taking action. You got to get up off your butt. You got to stop binge watching TV shows that aren't paying you any money, right? If you're a fanatic at going to the gym for five, six hours, cut that gym time down to an hour and get your butt to work. Whatever it is that, that's keeping you locked in uh, to, to, to go in a different direction than your real dreams and your real birthright, you need to reduce it, balance it better, or cut it loose completely. Okay? I know guys that are my age. Now, think about this. I'm a 70s baby, 1971. I know guys that are my age right now that are still chasing after women, after women. Women are holding them back their entire life and they still can't. Kids that you done created? No, no, nothing. Still calling me asking to borrow a couple dollars? Are you kidding me? Come on, man. We got to do better. Laziness is a big problem. Laziness and distractions. And still always consistently talking about what, what they're going to do one day. But one day runs out. We're in the third dimension. We, look, we, we actually live on a linear time scale in this dimension. And one day runs out in this dimension, in this particular energetic form that you've taken for this period of time. It's not going to last forever. It's just not going to last forever. Now, we are eternal. We live forever, spiritually. But our mission is to maximize our time in the third dimension in this physical form that we have here now, how can we help bring heaven to earth? How can we create and build something here? How can we learn from our past mistakes here? Earth is a proving ground to get to the next level. And if you're into procrastination mode, you're not going to get to the next level. You may fool yourself in thinking you're getting to the next level, but in reality, what's happening is you're just doomed to restart and recycle and come back and do it all over again until you figure it out. You see, there's people on this planet that are 10 and 15 years old that are ancient and their own mother or father could be 40, 50. And it could be their first time here. They could be newborns in the spiritual realm. We have to understand to maximize our time. Stop procrastinating. Write down the goals. Reverse engineer your goals. Start with the end in mind. When I write my goals down, I don't start, okay, my first goal is to, no. I go to the end goal first, and then I go backwards from there. I reverse engineer my goals. I'm going backwards. I start, I go to the future, then I travel backwards in time to my current moment. And each one of my goals has a subtitle and a paragraph. And that paragraph gives me my action steps. Because I know without an energy exchange, none of these goals are going to come to fruition. You must have action steps to bring your goals to fruition or they will never, ever, ever happen. That's guaranteed. You have to back your conscious thought by action so that you can get the manifestation. Without the action, no manifestation, no reality unfolds for you in the way that you would like to see it unfold. And you can hope and wish and pray and dream all you want. But without that action, it's just not going to happen for you. Not in this lifetime. I had a podcast with Elizabeth the other day on Biohack Your Best Life. We talked about dream boards. Some people call them vision boards. Get on Amazon and get yourself a dry caulk board and put it on your wall or somewhere where you can see it. And then get on your phone or your computer and connect it to a printer, preferably a color printer, and start printing out things that you want to manifest in your life. They could be tangible things or non-tangible things. We have tangible things on our board, right? Private jets and yachts and uh, things like that. But we also have intangible things on our board as well, like us smiling, pictures of us laughing, happiness. Okay, happiness. Trips that we would like to take and spend time with each other, quality time. 
It doesn't always have to be tangible things. But fill that dream board up with things. And then get on your computer or get out a good old-fashioned pen and paper and start writing down the accomplishments that you want to see. I call them benchmarks in order, in the order that they should appear in your life. Don't get overzealous. Put them in the correct order because don't forget, you got to pay your dues. And once you get those things written down in that order, then you begin to take them out and now you're going to create subcategories for each one of those things and you're going to actually create paragraphs that talk about the action steps. If you want to go even deeper, you take each one of those specific things and break them out into another page, one thing at a time. Each thing gets its own page, a full list of goals and planning that it will take to achieve that one benchmark. And then you celebrate your benchmarks. When you reach a benchmark, you celebrate it. Now, don't spend all your money. Don't go broke celebrating your benchmark. But you must acknowledge it. You must celebrate it. It could be something as simple as a toast or uh, a, a nice dinner somewhere or, you know, whatever it is that you feel like is a celebration, a, a, a day or two off, whatever it is. But you have to acknowledge it and smell the roses and celebrate the benchmark in some way, shape or form. And then you move on to the next benchmark and the next benchmark. And then after you know it, 5, 10, 15 years later, when you look up, everything on that dream board or most of the things on a dream board are going to have been accomplished. And you're going to say, wow, I did it. I really did it. You see? The procrastination and the fear and the laziness is really holding back a lot of people that have better qualifications than people who don't even have the level of knowledge, understanding, or even skill in some areas that they have, but they've maximized their time here. Some people may call it overachieving. I call it grinding. I call it grinding. There's people out here that are much more knowledgeable than me. I'm not the smartest person in the world. I'm pretty smart, but there's people smarter than me in different areas. You know what? I will never let anyone outwork me, though. I guarantee you that. <laughs> they will never outwork me. It's impossible to outwork me. It just can't happen. But see, that's my mindset. So through sheer grinding and effort, I make up the distance between my knowledge and their knowledge. Their success and my success. I, br I bridge the gap with energy. A lot of people think that money is what you should be going after. Money's not what you go after. You don't go after. I was talking to somebody just yesterday who has an amazing amount of knowledge and specialty skill. And I said to him, you should write a book about this. And he was like, ah, oh, you know, uh, you know, what, yeah, what do you think I should write a book? I said, well, you can help a lot of people with this knowledge. He was like, well, you know, I don't know. Then I said as a test, well, you can make a lot of money, too. You go, really? I can make money? And I said, yeah, but see, I was just testing you to see where your mind was at, where your heart was at. If you're chasing money, it'll never be successful. You have to chase your passion. And then you have to find a need for that passion in the world. And when you find a need for that passion in the world and you put forth that energy exchange to supply that need, money shows up in your bank account as a, as a side effect. You don't chase money. You chase your passion and fulfill it. And money is a side effect of you doing that. If you chase money, it's like chasing a carrot. It's like a greyhound dog at the, or at the dog track chasing after that little thing, whatever they make him run around the track. He never catches it, never catches it. But they run their asses off. They run as fast as they can, but they never catch that thing, whatever that is, a little rabbit or whatever artificial rabbit they put on the on the little track. They never catch it. And they try and they try and they try, but they never catch it. They run fast. They never get it. You have to be in a position to understand that chasing money is a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. Every day when I wake up, I think about how many more people I could change, how many more people I can help, how many more people can get this knowledge. At the end of the day, there is going to be a sacrifice for them to get this knowledge. They might have to buy a book. They might have to come on tour with me to Egypt or Cambodia or Turkey or one of these places we're taking people to. They may have to make a financial sacrifice to do that. They may have to make a financial sacrifice to 
uh, come to one of my online classes or workshops. That's just all part of the matrix that we're in. There's nothing I can do about that. The fact of the matter is I'm putting out the information. And even if they don't buy anything from me, they still have to spend money. Because I've got now my, my, my shorts and my reels and clips on social media have reached over 1 billion views. My cumulative video clips have reached over 1 billion views. That means a lot of free knowledge because that's all free. But it ain't really free, is it? Because why? The point I'm making here is you have to buy a cell phone. You have to buy a computer, one of the two, or a tablet. Then you have to activate it. You got to pay an activation fee. You have to pay for the monthly payment on that device to access these videos that I'm putting out for quote unquote free. You see, nothing truly is free. Free is an illusion. It's an illusion. Because unless you pay for your cell phone bill and buy the device, you won't be able to watch any of the content that I put out. So you're making a sacrifice either way it goes. There's no universe that we're living in is based on consumption. Have you figured that out yet? <laughs> to, to create revenue that then is used as a tool to give to someone else who then converts that into energy that gives you the ability to use, utilize a cell phone. Everything here in the third dimension is based on consumption. It's a consumptory uh, universe. There's no way to get around it. Somebody said I keep freezing. Maybe I froze a little bit here. Looks like I got a good signal. But uh, anyway, let me just get rid of this crazy person. Every now and then you got to get rid of the psychos. Yeah, get rid of them. You got to get rid of the psychos. They come on your lives. These zealots. There's a lot of zealots out there. These zealots are fractals, just like the zealots that are going to show up in your own life. Okay? Just like the zealots that are going to show up in your own life. People that don't believe in you. Or it's actually the opposite. They see your power, but they don't want it to exist. <laughs> they see your power, but they don't want it to exist. Those are the zealots. And they know that they are in a cult of some type. And they want to try to affect you in a negative way. But you just keep on grinding, man. Just keep on doing what you do. And just keep your head up. Stick your chest out. Put your shoulders back. And keep moving forward. Just keep on pushing. And guess what? Those zealots, they all become your greatest fans. <laughs> they all become your greatest fans. They're going to watch everything you do, everything you say. They're going to hang on your every word. They're going to go to sleep thinking about you. They're going to wake up dreaming about you. That's how it works. They're just super fans. Straight super fans. That's all they are. All the people that go out there and try to make negative videos about me, I'm already help, helping more people than they can ever help in a life than 10 lifetimes. They're just super fans. They're absolute super fans. They go to sleep thinking about me. They dream about me. They, they can't even keep a relationship with their girlfriend or boyfriend or their wife and husband because they're talking about me all day and all night. That's how obsessed they, these zealots are, the, the, the trolls. They just can't get enough, you see? And every time they turn on their computer or their screen, I just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And they're going, damn, how the hell is this guy getting bigger? We're trying to tear him down. We're trying to bring him down. You ever seen, see, some of y'all ain't from the 1980s. So in the 1980s, I started watching the WWF, Worldwide Wrestling Federation. Now it's called something else. We had a, uh, an actor. I call them all actors, you know, these, these wrestler guys. But we had a guy named Hulk Hogan. Okay? Hulk Hogan was one of the biggest wrestlers at the time when I was a, a kid growing up. And uh, Hulk Hogan had a special power. He was the Hulk. So when he would get in the ring, the more they beat him, the stronger he got. They would send double teams and triple teams at him in the ring. And the more they pounded on him, the stronger he got. He would stand up and he would pick these guys up, two, three guys at a time, and throw them over the top rope. It looked like he was down and out. It looked like they'd been beating this guy to death. And all of a sudden, he started taking each impact and converting it alchemically into his own strength. And the more they pounded on him, 
the stronger he got and the bigger he got and the more powerful he got. That's me. That's me. I can take a licking and keep on ticking. You see? The average person would have succumbed to the pressure already. They wouldn't be able to continue to move on because their mind would have told them fear, 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 pain, hurt, 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 and they would have become procrastinators. If I would have done that, you guys would be getting no forbidden knowledge, no nothing. But that takes internal strength and power. And you're going to have to develop tough, thick skin out here on these streets. If you're a sensitive person that, that whines and cries over every little thing, it's going to be tough for you to make it out here. It's going to be really tough in anything. It don't have to be social media. It could be anything. You have to find a way to dig deep within yourself to say, F these people. I'm going to do me no matter what. No matter what. And set yourself some goals and some plans. And the greatest success is when you see and you look back on yourself and see where you came from and where you are the next time you look back at yourself. So you see this consistent level of growth within yourself. You're competing against yourself, nobody else. For the outside haters and the trolls and the zealots, revenge is your success. You see? When they see me, it irks them. It's like a it's like somebody taking a butter knife and putting it between their rib cage and twisting it. That kind of dull, sharp pain. Because they're like, man, this guy, he just he just keeps getting bigger. And I can't turn on anything without seeing his face or hearing his voice. It's everywhere. There's nothing we can do to stop this guy. You got to take on the same mindset I have. It's like, keep watching the glow up. That's all I got to say. Keep watching the glow up. That's the mindset you got to have, man. Let their negative energy drive you to be successful. When I was in the third grade, all of the students in class had to stand up one at a time and tell the teacher what they wanted to do for a living. Now, keep in mind, this whole week, we have been looking at different careers and we had a career day and parents came to school for the career day and now a career day is over and we're looking at these different types of careers and it's time to stand up and say what we think we may want to do. People would stand up, I want to be a garbage man, I want to be a janitor, I want to be a fireman, I want to be a policeman, I want to be a doctor, a dentist, so forth and so on. All good, you know. Good things. Nothing wrong with that at all. I jumped up and what I wanted to be wasn't on the list. It wasn't on any list. Nobody from career day came to talk about this. I jumped up and said, I want to be famous and I want to be on TV. And I smiled. And the teacher said, oh, Billy, you'll never be famous. You'll never be on TV. You're poor. Look where you come from. And everybody in the class started laughing at me. Third grade, they started laughing profusely. And never forget that, Miss Alvarez. They started laughing at me. I cried. I ain't going to lie. I cried. I was hurt. I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. But that set the tone for the rest of my life. Whereas most people would have taken that as a crushing experience, I took that as complete and pure essence of motivation and inspiration. Period. And now, to date, I've been on well over a hundred different TV shows and over a thousand different podcasts. I'm on Amazon. I'm on Apple. I'm on uh, Gaia, Forbidden Knowledge TV, Travel Channel, History Channel, Science Channel, Discovery Channel, Discovery Plus. I'm on dozens of channels, hundreds of shows, and billions of views on social media around the world. See? So every time that lady, if she's still alive, turns on the TV, she sees my face somewhere. Somewhere, somehow, she's going to see my face. I'm on the History Channel. I'm on everything. You see? But what did I do? I didn't let that put a fear in my heart to go out and not want to fulfill my dream. 
Now, when I said it, it wasn't because I was thinking I was going to be this knowledge guy. I just thought it was cool to be able to be on TV and, you know, be being seen and be known. I mean, I was just a kid, you know. This is before cable TV even came out. <laughs> cable TV didn't even exist back then. And so I just thought it would be cool, though, to be able to do that. That was just my perspective. I had no idea that it would be in the field that it's in, teaching and knowledge and science and ancient civilizations and all these different topics. But that's just what it panned out to be. But I knew deep in my heart, I would in some way, somehow, I was going to find a way to fulfill that self-fulfilled prophecy of putting myself in that position, in that situation, which is exactly what I did. I took that dark negative energy and I spun it alchemically and converted it into positivity and driving forces for myself. That normally would have gave somebody PTSD as a kid. For me, it gave me PTG, post-traumatic growth. I never took the victim mindset. I never took the look what they did to me. Look what they're doing and that they're holding me down and like the man is holding me back and I can't do this and I can't do that and, and, I, and I'm no good and, and look, they're oppressing me. And I never, I never had that mindset, not even once. It never crossed my mind. I had friends that had that mindset, people that I grew up with. Never crossed my mind. Not once. I took a totally different road. A totally different level of understanding. Did I make mistakes along the way? Yeah. My own biopic that will be coming out in a couple of years. I made a lot of mistakes along the way. I know In no way, shape, or form was I a perfect person. However, I own kids. And I began to realize everyone isn't just naturally going to levitate towards, gravitate towards the drive that it takes to succeed. Sometimes you got to coach people along the way a little bit, which is why I'm doing this video. Sometimes you just got to, to, to uh, I know it's freezing every now and then, I don't know why it's doing that, but you got to coach people along the way, you know, and so hopefully uh, today you guys learned something from this talk, hopefully y'all got something from this, um, hopefully you can take this information, if you're not a procrastinator, maybe give it to somebody else, I'm going to save this video, I might have it slightly edited and uploaded to YouTube, since YouTube takes long form videos now in this format, Put it on my YouTube account as well, and just give you guys an, uh, you know a chance to maybe meditate on some of the information that I spoke about today, and give yourself a chance to maybe see where you can grow, you can implement self growth, maybe you can become inspired, maybe you can put down those fears, maybe you can begin to take action and write down real goals and achieve benchmarks in your life, so that you can get yourself and your family to the next level. All right. Anyway, guys, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. This is why I call these are forbidden leaders. You guys are leaders, not followers. Remember that. Always be a leader, not a follower. Not a follower, a leader. You guys are leaders. Leaders because you're on here. You're trying to take information and knowledge from sources that resonate with you. And then you try to implement them and also share that knowledge. That's the definition of a leader. All right, so we all lead by example so that we can be the light that the world's been waiting on. We are the saviors that we have been waiting for. All right? Anyway, guys, I love y'all. What's up, Cindy Loves Rich? I appreciate y'all. Many, many years um, supporting Forbidden Knowledge. Many years, Cindy Loves Rich. I appreciate y'all so much. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I got to finish this last part of my workout, and I'm heading back to the house. Peace.